I got a fun one for you today, guys. I got a crazy setup here to test this theory. You know, everyone in their house has one or maybe three or four hose bibs that are exposed to the cold outside. What really happens behind the scenes with those? And could we even freeze a frost-proof hose bib if it got cold enough outside? I got a crazy experiment. I got 80 pounds of dry ice right here. Today's build show is sponsored by Aquar. Let's get going. All right, guys, so here's the premise. You know, in the South where I build, we actually, most builders, do not use frost-proof hose bibs. If you're in Canada, if you're in Minnesota, you're absolutely laughing at this. But this is what gets installed in most houses in the South. Just a regular old hose bib to the outside. This gets mounted right at the siding. And the shutoff for this is right here, which means that there's water all the way out to the end of this hose bib. So most people cover these with a big nasty foam cover if it's going to be cold outside. Now the northern builders are a little smarter, and actually this is required by code. They're most of the time using one of these. This is a brass or a copper shutoff hose bib that when you turn this knob right here, it's actually shutting off right there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a shutoff right inside here, and this is an eight inch model. So it's actually shutting off eight inches inside. So if you can imagine this on your rim board of your house, looking up in your basement, it's shutting off just probably beyond your insulation on your rim joist, something like that. Now, Aquar makes another model of a hose bib, which is pretty sleek. Check this black one out. This is the cover on the outside of the house, and this is all you see. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert one of these. And this thing, when you insert it, becomes the hose bib where you can shut it off here. But then when you take this out, it's shutting off back into the wall. Now this is the four inch model. They also make lots of other ones like this 12 inch model. So if you need a real deep one, but the difference between these models is the materials. Now this is obviously copper. This one happens to be copper as well. The one that I installed on this freezer is brass though. And brass is probably the most common version. So in this freezer, I've got three hose bibs set up for you. I've got a totally typical uh, copper setup with just a brass hose bib at the end, non-frost free. I've got a four inch brass frost free, which would work generally pretty well for the South. And then I've got the four inch Aquar. Now the Aquar though is a little different. It's made from stainless steel. And if you remember your high school science class, stainless steel is much less conductive than brass or copper or other metals. We don't make our wires out of stainless steel for a reason. They don't conduct energy very well which means that that stainless steel is actually eight times less conductive of heat transfer than the brass. So here's what I got going on. I got three of these coming into a freezer. Unfortunately, when I drilled the holes for all three of these, I hit the Freon line. So the Freon line does not work. This will not chill. That's why we've got this massive ice sitting here. We've got a bunch of dry ice and regular ice. We're going to fill this up to get this cooler nice and cold. Now I pre-cooled it overnight with 20 pounds of dry ice just to get the freezer a little bit chilly. And if you look at the temperature gauge in here, we're basically at zero degrees Celsius, around 30, 32 Fahrenheit. Now, even at that temperature, we can already see something really interesting, which I honestly didn't expect these temperatures. This little uh, time and temperature gauge tells us that inside my office right now, it's 67 degrees and actually 67% relative humidity. It's 32 inside, which means that we've got a little bit of condensation happening on that brass fixture right there as it comes into the house. This stainless steel fixture, if you look here, we've got maybe one little drop of water right up against the cooler, nothing back here. And then interestingly enough, the copper doesn't seem like it's got any condensation going on. I'm not sure quite to, what to make of that yet, but let's pause here. I'm gonna load up this thing with some serious ice and I'll be back to you in a minute. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it froze my glove because it was wet. Okay, oh yeah, it's butt cold in there. Okay, all right, we're loaded up. <laughs> this freezer 
the Freon may not work, but dry ice is minus 109.3, I believe. It's really stinking cold. My gloves got wet on the ice, and my thumb froze to the, uh, to the inside of my glove when I was handling that dry ice. It is really cold. So now I gotta figure out how to get this thermometer in here. Uh, my childhood frostbite memories are coming back to me. Um, and I made sure, by the way, to not touch any of the hose bibs to the dry ice. They're all away, same with the ice. No, there's no ice or dry ice touching the hose bibs. Now let's set up a time-lapse camera and a GoPro. Let's see if we can see the temperature drop in there as we GoPro this, and let's see how long it takes. I also need to turn on the water. The hose bib is on to here, and now I need to charge these hose bibs. Okay, now we are charged. So we should have water now um, to the shutoff valve, which is there, the shutoff valve, which is there, and this one, remember, is going all the way into the cooler, so I'm hoping that that thing splits on us. We shall see. All right, guys, Saturday morning. I have not seen it yet. It's been uh, how many hours? I don't know, about uh, 16 hours or so since I was here last. Let's see what happened. Turn the lights on here. Oh. Oh, yes! Look at that ice block on top of the brass! That is crazy! Oh my goodness! And look at this, the dog bed is like frozen to the top. Oh my gosh! That is crazy! Look at all the frost on top of this thing. I wonder if there's any way to read it. Okay, so check it out. The temperature gauge is pegged below zero. And this temperature gauge stops reading at minus 20 Fahrenheit. So we are below minus 20 out at this point. The copper is still wet, but not frozen. The brass is totally frozen. So much so that even around the brass, has, um, is that condensation? No, that's condensation, not frost. But look at that big chunk of frost. And this is the frost proof hose bib, which means the shutoff is here, which would be quote unquote in the house. I'd be willing to bet there's a plug of ice in this copper right here. And if we keep this test going, it's gonna freeze. Now I shut off the water because I didn't want a big uh, frozen, uh, uh, burst pipe issue. So I shut the water off to here and I was expecting this piece of copper to bust. There's water here, but I think that's just condensation. But this copper pipe has not burst yet. That's really interesting. And on the stainless steel model over here, which is the Aquar, we've got just a little bit of condensation, but that's it. Okay, now let's check out the infrared gun to see if we can get some temperature readings. So first off, this ice block here is reading 46 degrees. Let's see if you can read that. I'm not sure. Oh, no, it's reading. Well, that makes more sense. Yeah, 30, 35 degrees right there. See if you can record that right there. Yeah, it's interesting. It's varying depending on where it is. 39 degrees, 38 degrees. You'd think it'd be 32. Now we come out here to the copper, and this copper pipe is at 60. Let's see what this copper pipe is. Also about 60 degrees. You can read that. And then let's see what the stainless is over here. Mm -hmm. The stainless is 59.7 degrees. So that, wow, that's crazy results. I didn't expect that. The copper is staying warmer than anything else. I think that's because the copper is all connected to the water line and has a big radiator to get the heat from this room. And the copper is co conducting the heat really well because it only has one cold input. And this guy here, which is the brass uh, frost proof, totally frozen over. It's, it's you know really close to freezing temperature until it gets to the copper and then it's gone back to more room temperature. And then the stainless steel is reacting 
really similarly to the um, copper here in terms of temperature. And I think that's because the stainless is not conducting the cold from the inside. I mean, it's at least 20 some, 25 degrees warmer on this stainless than this brass. And remember, this brass goes all the way through into the cold. The stainless goes all the way through into the cold. That's wild. All right, so at this point, I say I'm gonna cover this back up. I'm gonna leave it for the weekend and we'll film on Monday and hopefully we'll have a uh, burst as if we had a you know cold snap for two or three days where it was below freezing outside. I'll see you Monday. Hey guys, it's Sunday, and I was curious what was happening uh, with our little freezer experiment. So I popped in with the family after church, and let's see, I've got a little time lapse going on here. Oh, look at that. The frost is getting huge. Look at that frost right there. Oh, a little piece melted and fell off just as we were talking. Look at that, that's crazy, but it's beyond, it's starting to come on to the copper here. And on the, uh, the aqua, which is the stainless, look, we've got just a little bit of frost right up against the freezer. This is about 48 hours in. Uh, my little clock here, if you can read it, has it at 50 hours from where I started that. And then the copper one down here, let's go take a look at that real quick. The copper mop which is straight through and is the uh, frost proof hose bib or non frost proof rather. We've got some ice forming here, but other than that, it's still getting what I think it's getting the heat from everything. Look at that, there's an actual, I can see it now, there's an actual icicle <laughs> forming on that brass one. All right, well, we're gonna keep it going another 24 hours. Um, and I'm expecting after, what would that be, 72 hours or so that this, will freeze, but I don't know, we'll see. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay guys, I was here over the weekend, but now it's been another two days. It's Tuesday, and just for reference, it's 70 degrees in the building, currently I'm 51 percent humidity and this little guy here is my elapsed time timer 97 hours and 39 minutes and i started this maybe five minutes after i put the ice in so we're just shy of a hundred hours in the chest now if you remember i said earlier in the video i broke the free online in here so unfortunately i wasn't able to plug this in and i have not loaded any more ice in or dry ice so let's see what's happening underneath the dog bed oh my gosh it's still really darn frozen oh man that's wild and look at all the condensation that's happening in the bottom part here and where it looks like it it covered better nice and frozen we've got a lot of condensation that's frozen up that's pretty interesting so we've got a dew point here happening and that's basically what's happened to this too guys if you look at this we've got dew on all three of these hose bibs the copper has quite a bit of dew now after 100 hours. This uh, brass fixture, if you look at the time-lapse footage that I made over the weekend, I ran it for a couple of 12-hour shifts with the GoPro. This, this kind of uh, frost kind of pulsated almost. So crazy. That brass just transferred that cold right in and had big frostiness, almost like the top of the... Uh, freezer here, which is glass, right? And just single pane glass. I'm really curious whether we ever got a frozen plug of water in here where the shutoff valve is, which is basically like right in here. And I'm wondering if we ever had a frozen plug here. And then lastly, if you look at the aqua hose bib, which is stainless, you can really visibly see a line where there's condensation and no condensation. I think that's where the shutoff is happening. And if my science is correct, what's happening with this copper assembly here is this is acting like a radiator. So my 70 degree air in here is collecting that heat in this copper and transferring it to the 
uh, cooler or where it's stopping, in this case at the brass and the stainless fixture, and the water in there as well as also collecting that heat. And then what we've got here is a refrigerator wall that's maybe somewhere between an inch and a half, inch and three quarter thick, and there's, there's foam on the inside there. But let's, uh, let's actually cut these tubes at all three of these places and see if we can find a plug. I got out my tube cutter, my auto cut. Let's see which way this is going to go. I'm going to try and cut it fairly close to the uh, cooler. I hope this is going to work. We're about to find out. Ooh. Ooh, what do we have here? What do we have here? What is that? Is that a frozen pl I can't tell. No, 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 it's water. Oh, that's wild. It looks to me like if you look all the way in there, there might be a frozen plug at the end. That's going to be really hard to see on camera. But did you see that pressure kind of spout out? There was still pressure on this line because I pressurized it with a hose and then shut it off. And that pressure also maybe because the ice that was forming was pushing in this way and, and putting even more pressure on that, which means that we have a plug of ice in there, or we did at one time. Now let's cut this brass one off. Kind of a uh, funny story here. I had my, my guys make this up, not the plumbers. And so this hose bib is not really intended to be a soldered on fixture. It's supposed to go with a, oh, oh, what do we have here? Oh yeah. Oh, we can see the plug, that we can see the uh, shut off and there's currently no ice there, but we're fairly melted here compared to the other day. I wonder if I would have cut that off a day or two ago, if that would have actually had some ice forming in there. The other thing that's interesting about this, I was just mentioning, we soldered this on, <laughs> sweated this on, and this, this obviously is a screw on fixture, so we didn't put this on uh, correctly. Certainly wouldn't have passed plumbing code. Okay, now let's cut off the aqua and see if we can see if this one's got anything interesting to see in here. A little bit of pressure relief as well. And you can see the shutoff is like right there which is just what I was saying. You can see the condensation line stops right there. Now, I should have done this before I pulled this, but if you pull this freezer back, oh darn, I wish I would have, there was a pretty decent little pool of water underneath the brass fixture. There was a couple of drops underneath the stainless fixture, and there was somewhere in between underneath the copper fixture. I think the really interesting part of this test is that I didn't expect so much condensation to happen on this brass fixture. It makes me wonder about other climate zones, like what is happening to brass fixtures behind the wall in Wisconsin and Vancouver and all those cold climates. Is this kind of thing happening inside the wall cavity? Now, like I said earlier, this cooler's only got an inch and a half maybe of insulation. So from inside the cooler where we know it was at least minus 30 to the room temperature here, which is 70, that's 100 degrees delta between the two. And that 100 degree delta is happening in an inch and a half. That's very, very little uh, space for that to happen. I made kind of a drawing to show you what that would actually look like in a house wall. Now here's the typical southern house right here. And in a southern house, Here's your, here's your foundation. Here, let's see if we can move over here, get a little better light. Here's your foundation. So this is slab on grade. You've got, let's say, a two by four wall, so four inches thick with a stone facade. Oftentimes, hose bibs are coming up out of the slab and then coming across. So this piece of copper, let's say, which is non-frost free, has maybe 10 inches, let's say, uh, of copper coming from the heated house through the wall until you've got it. 
Now let's say the exterior air is 20 degrees outside, which should be pretty normal on a really cold Texas day. The inside is 72. We've got maybe a 50 degree delta between inside and out. If that 20 degree air stayed for a couple of days, I could see this copper freezing somewhere in this location. Now on the other hand, a northern house that has a basement, here's your concrete foundation wall. And let's say when you come on top of the wall, then you've got, let's say, two by 10 floor joists in an older house. And then this is your basement space. And the basement's, you know, 68 degrees out or so. You've got a copper line here, and then you're transitioning to a frost-free hose bib here. If the exterior is 20 degrees, you've got much less of a temperature gradient uh, in this scenario than you do on the southern wall. But what's interesting is, in a colder climate where it's likely to go a week of 20 degrees or a week of 10 degrees, to think if we had brass on here, could that brass be condensing and then later dripping into this band joist area to maybe cause some rot, maybe cause some mold or some damage? I don't know. I'm curious. I, I don't think that there's any way to say for sure. But the other thing that this brought up to me was why was that frost, non-frost free hose bib over here, the copper one, not condensing? So one of the guys on my team, Tim, uh, is a mechanical engineer. He brought me his principles of heat transfer. We're gonna get nerdy for a second here. Let's take a look at the book. Okay, so here's the heat transfer tables. What we're looking at here is BTUs per hour per foot. And at 32 degrees, let's look at the different metals we've got in use here. So here's copper. Copper is going to move 224 BTUs per hour per foot. Now brass, on the other hand, uh, is, where's brass on this table? Lead, mercury, nickel, silver, tin, zinc, brass, here we go. Now brass on the hand is only moving 56 BTUs per hour per foot. Quite a bit less, like less than a fourth of what copper is. In other words, copper is very conductive. That's why we use it for electrical wires. Now, if we keep going down the table to stainless steel, stainless steel is only moving eight BTU hour, BTUs per hour per foot. So in effect, stainless steel at eight BTUs per hour per foot is eight times less conductive than brass. And, and the copper, on the other hand, is moving a ton of heat. So when we had that big assembly over there, that's why that copper, even though it was a non-frost free, was able to gather enough heat from this space. We had a very thin wall, and the brass, on the other hand, was moving quite a bit of that cold or lack of heat uh, into the room, and that's why we saw a ton of condensation in the brass. The stainless steel had a hard time moving that. It's only eight BTU per hour per foot. Okay, now the other, the other thing that's interesting on this table that I don't wanna get in, into it too deep but you can also see the transfer for air on here, how much heat air moves, and you can also see how much water moves. Now, now, I believe what's happening for this assembly that we just cut off a minute ago is all those BTU hours per foot of copper at 220 some on that table were gathering up like a radiator and sending that heat right to this location, right to this location, and right to this location. So, I was totally shocked that I couldn't freeze, in this case, the frost-free hose bib. But if this would have been a normal house with normal wall conditions where I've got a thick wall and this cooler was going for another uh, day or two of cold, I think certainly that would have frozen. And we see that all the time in Texas. The non-frost-free hose bibs, when it gets down to 15, 20 degrees out for three, four days at a time, they break all over town. But the crazy part of this test was I did not expect to see so much condensation on the brass. And the stainless had a little bit of condensation, but performed much, much better. All right, anyways, let's wrap up the video, guys. Thanks for joining me. This was really a bit of a science experiment. I didn't totally know what we had going on here. But I do want to say big thanks to my friends at Aquar for sponsoring this video. They didn't tell me what to say. They didn't uh, skew the results. I came up with the test. I do want to mention though that they've got a, a bunch of other options for hose bibs besides this one. So basically this is the one that's mounted inside the freezer. So on the inside of the cooler, this is what's there. And one 
thing that I like about what they do is they've got a rubber gasket between their plate and the wall, which is actually going to reduce a little bit of that conductivity as well from that stainless steel. And they've got some other versions as well that are even sleeker. Now this one has a vacuum breaker built into the fixture. That's this right here. This is a vacuum breaker, which is going to break the vacuum from the water to make sure no water from your garden hose backs up into the house. That's not good. The plumbing codes require a vacuum breaker, but they've got a brand new version right here, which is this guy that has a little round cover. So if you want a really, really sleek hose bib for your house that's even smaller, you could do this one right here. It's a little circle, circle with a circular cover. Let me pull the beady uh, tape off there. So you could have that mounted on the outside of your house. Flip this open, you can see there's no vacuum breaker. So what they've done is, I've got it upside down here. What they've done is they've added the vacuum breaker to the part that fits in. So this is basically the handle that's going to turn on the water. So the water now is on to here, and then you're going to turn on your on off your water from can't hold everything in place and do it from this location. So this is now your on off switch and this is the vacuum breaker. So when you turn this off, the vacuum is going to be broken here and you're going to have a little bit of water spill out. And then when you pull this and turn it off, the water is actually shut off into the wall cavity. Now this is the four inch model, which you might use in Texas, but if you're in a really cold climate, you can get this up to 12 inches, which means that now this is the outside of your house and this is your shut off location way back in the wall. And again, because it's stainless, we saw you're going to move much less of that cold into the house and actually add a pretty nice thermal break. And I think you're going to add some durability long term to your house because you won't have that possibility or you'll have less of a possibility of some condensation dripping if you have some crazy, crazy cold temperatures outside. These guys have thought of all the details, including they include stainless steel screws to match the fixture. So if, if you were installing this one, they've even included black stainless screws. Anyways, check it out. I'll put a link in the description to Aqua. Big thanks to those guys for sponsoring. Guys, if you're not fo following me currently, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, check out our content on buildshownetwork.com because we have one brand new video publishing Monday through Friday on our website. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.